What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to this tutorial and I'm going to do a tutorial on some Necron terrain. And I'm going to show you how to make Necron terrain out of, well, some everyday objects. Really. I'm, going to, I'm going to use one everyday object. In this case, it's a shower gel. Now, we've all done this kind of thing before, Pringles tubes, that kind of thing. Before I go on, let's go camera so, down. Now, as I was saying, yeah, you've, you've done this kind of thing before with like Pringles tubes and that kind of thing. But, but for the Necrons, they, they tend not to have, well, from what I've seen and artwork and things, that not to have so much the round cylindrical types as these obelisk type things. Now, this is an old, empty, and washed out, I hasten to add, bottle of shower gel. You can probably guess the make, and I won't, I won't say it, but pretty much any ones of this ilk will do. Um, you can see here, it's absolutely perfect for Necron terrain. Why is it perfect for Necron? It's got all these little recesses here that you can put paint in, you know, whites, blues, greens, whatever uh, your colour scheme for your like, terrain or board may be. And like you'll see at the top here, it's got a nice lot of angular shapes and lines and these can all be highlighted as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to base it first. Well, we're not going to base it. We're going to put it on a base and I'm going to use this. Now I got this, got these from my local pound shop actually. So a pound for four coasters. I believe you can get them even cheaper than that. So what I'm going to do is glue it onto one of these. I mean, as you can see, I bought myself a couple of them. So the total cost thus far is obviously your shower gel, but it's not going to cost you anything because it's what you already use. Now, I have used uh, rounder shower gels in the past, um, but still kind of obelos, obel, ugh, obel, obelisky. <laughs> But this one here is, is still got a bit of a like a, a number on it, and I'm not sure whether I want to take that off or not. But I'm going to paint over this anyway, so I don't think it will come through. But if it does, it's not a problem. Anyway, let's get to um, gluing it on the base first. Now these bases are ideal because they've got like a cork bottom, which is ideal for protecting whatever's underneath it. And this is, as I think, we'll get away with just super gluing uh, bottom around here. If you have problems with this, you can, of course, I oh, no, go to green stuff or something like that. But I'm hoping. That this will be fine. And that's it, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to press it down there. So that's the first stage. Getting it glued onto the base. Now you'll be able to use this base from this point on to hold it, to paint it. Um, so I'm going to come back when this is dry. Okay, so I'm just going to prime this um, using my Badger Patriot 105 Black Vallejo Primer. PSI set to 25 and I'm just going to lay down some primer. Of course you can prime it however you want to. Okay, so now we've ascertained that this is painted, it's all dry. I'm going to go with some Vallejo black uh, airbrush paint. Now I want to paint it black. Now I know that painting it black primer onto black plastic was uh, a little bit difficult. And it's going to be equally difficult having black on black. That said, I think the results will be worth it in the end. So, put my thinner through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the airflow. Right, okay. So I'm going to get this um, airbrushed 
on and you could hand brush it. Well. Seeing as I've got the airbrush. And it's not too much of a problem. You can see where you've gone. On the uh, on the, uh, the paint has its shinier. Yeah. This is literally just a a base paint. Yeah. Get this on. Let this dry. That way, if I want to touch up later on, I'll just use the Vallejo Black to, to do that with. Okay, now we'll wait for that to dry. Okay, now that that is dry, uh, we've got a layer of um, uh, primer and of uh, Vallejo Black. What I'm going to do is some edge highlighting on the, well, the all the sharp edges now with uh, Citadel Eshing Grey. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so I'm going to take this straight out of the pot. I'm not going to bother watering uh, or thinning this down. I'm going to say watering down, but uh, either way. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to just go along all the, what I deem as the straight edges like so some of these are more raised than others so There you go, so, so sort of like that. And then I'm just gonna use the edge of the brush. Oops. On the other areas. <laughs> like this. Like that. So I'm just going to do that for all the all the edges, basically. Now that's done. That's all the the edges I've done with the ashing grey, and I'm thinking for the these side bits that are that have little uh, dips in. Moot green is what I'm thinking. Uh, now first I was thinking I'll just paint them on by hand, and now I'm thinking airbrush is the way to go. And it's going to be a real test of, I think my Badger Patriot can handle it, if not I can use my Chrome. I'll try the Badger first, I mean if I if it messes up, it will, you know, it's easy enough to rectify uh, with black and grey again. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. I'm just going to get my airbrush ready. Like I said, I'll try it. I'll try it with the the badger first because you can get some pretty good results. If not, I'll go with my my Renegade Chrome because um, that's a finer one. But we'll see what we can see. Okay, okay. There's uh, a very amateurish attempt um, at airbrushing the lines on. Um, yeah, it's okay. But then I'm thinking, well, if energy is coming, it's emanating through it. I mean, the light would. Uh, shine out and down, so you got kind of got that effect there. But um, I mean, you could decide to go do it by hand. That that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so that, but that's the way I've done it anyway. So might put some further markings on it next, and then we'll look at basing it. 
So in order to get some inspiration for the markings I was going to use, I went to my old Necron Codex. Ha! Knew it was useful for something, eh? And so that was the one that kind of caught my eye, the Ankh of the Triarch. So uh, this is what I'm going to lay down on it now. And I wanted initially, well, I was kind of making it up as I went along, but um, I didn't want it to be like a glowing rune type of marking. I wanted it to be kind of like a... I don't know, a carved out of the stone or marble or whatever the this obelisk is made of. I just want it to be look as if it had been carved out. So uh, anyway, you'll see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just taking some dead white from Vallejo. Any white will do uh, for what I did here. So I just laid some out in my little uh, cap uh, palette that I use. And I went, I set about, um, painting it out, freehanding the ank on the side of this obelisk. Now, I'll be honest, I, you know, I'm not the greatest freehand expert in the world, I know that, but um, I didn't really want it to be perfect um, because I wanted it to have this kind of look like it's being carved out by hand look. Uh, I don't know what ever backstory you could have for that I, I don't know maybe some locals found this marking and they decided to carve it out on here because of this these glowing obelisks I, d I don't know whatever reasons uh, but it could have been like a, um, a primitive tribe and so yeah so I decided to to mark it out um, by hand in in this manner and it's quite easy to, to lay out the um, design. And the white's quite nice to, to go on the black there. Um, like I say, I wasn't entirely sure what direction I was going to go, but I knew I didn't want it to be a glowing rune. And like I say, I don't I didn't want it to be perfectly symmetrical, but you can see that it's not bad, I think. You know, it's okay for freehand, especially for me. Okay. So next I went to Administratum Grey. So this is kind of the opposite of stone effect really. You go light and work your way through to dark, whereas stone effect I kind of start off dark and work my way through to light colours. Uh, and again I, I wasn't particularly bothered about blending or anything like that. It's going to be like, you know, the three feet rule, right? So the way I figure. It'll be fine, it'll be just fine. Okay, next is Mechanicus Standard Grey. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing, just overlay it over over the administratum grey. Uh, I'm not bothered about covering it over. I'm not, I'm not trying to cover it over, of course. I want some of it bleeding through on the outside. Uh, so I am gradually trying to get smaller with each, with each layer, and, and there we go. So, can I just stand the grey over, over the administratum grey? Right, now is Abaddon black. And this is the last uh, colour I'm going to use. I didn't want to go with too many colours. I just, it's just, I mean, to me, I just I like a bit of terrain and I like to get it on the table. I like it to look half decent. So, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not the best terrain maker in the world. Um, well, the best idea, uh, creative idea um, inventor, but um, I think this works ad adequately well, at least for mine. And there it is, that's that's how it looks. It does look better in person than on camera, I have to say. So now I just based them up, and as you can see, I put some stones, some sand, and some flock around the, the bases. So that's it, guys. Uh, you can paint. Of course, I could paint the, um, the the edging of of the bases there, but I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I may do some um, some some flock going up, uh, like as if it's growing up in strands, um, or put some of that lichen um, on the on the base that I got in my acid drop box. But uh, there it is. That that's the finished product. And please bear in mind that I. I started this tutorial a long time ago, um, so that's why there's different camera angles and things. Um, but hopefully, 
you know the information is there and it's a nice simple and effective I think um, obelisk for necrons and necron terrain I'm sure you know you guys can do a lot heck of a lot better than I did but you can do a similar kind of idea can't you um, heck if you were that event if you could even put LED lights in it if you so wished uh, you know which as I'm I'm learning electronics now I maybe something that happens in future terrain pieces who knows I may be able to combine my two hobbies but that's it for now that's my uh, necron terrain tutorial Thanks ever so much for watching. Remember, all brushes lead to war. And bye for now, folks. Bye-bye.